we're going to look at three examples of uh, factoring trinomials. Um, the problem here is that it can get confusing because you have more than one variable floating around in this trinomial. But uh, to start off, this first example here, um, if we look at these three terms, again, always look for a GCF first. Um, all these numbers are even, so we can at least pull out a 2. Uh, anything else? Um, there are V's are not found in all three terms, and we don't see a F in all three terms. So it looks like just 2 is going to be our GCF. So if we factor a 2 out, we're left with 25V squared plus 20VF plus 4F squared. And now we can factor this um, using any of our shortcuts, whether we can recognize that this is a perfect square trinomial. Maybe you see that, maybe you don't. And if you don't see it, um, let's look at it as an approach kind of like what we did with bottoms up. Um, don't worry about all the variables for right now. Um, let's just suppose the F's weren't there. Just trying to get you to see how this could be like a problem similar to what we had done in the past. Now this is not the actual problem and again I said ignore the F and I'm writing it down but let's not worry about the F right now suppose we just had this we got rid of the F and the F squared if we were to factor this and if you did not recognize that uh, this is a perfect square trinomial don't worry about it let's do bottoms up so we take 25 times 4 our product is 100 and our sum is equal to 20. And the two numbers that work here will be 10 times 10, that gives us 100, and 10 plus 10 gives us 20. So what we have done in the past is we've just come back and wrote v plus 10, v plus 10. And we come back with the number we made disappear. Again, I'm just following that bottoms up, bottoms up technique. So that's gonna be 25. And then we simplify. So we have, what, V plus, divide these by 5, we have 2 fifths, and V plus 2 fifths. And then we do bottoms up on this. So therefore, uh, we have 5V plus 2, 5V plus 2. Now let's not forget the GCF we pulled out from the beginning. And now what we have here is still not the final answer. And the reason why is because um, I'm just... I was trying to get you to see this trinomial without having an F in it. But we have to bring that F back. Um, notice this last term is 4F squared. How could we get 4F squared down here by multiplying these last two terms? If we just stuck an F right here and an F right here. 2F times 2F is 4F squared. And um, notice there's an F here in the middle. Well, if we were to FOIL this out and check our work, notice we will get uh, the trinomial that we have in here after we factor the 2 out. Check it out. 5V, 5V, that's 25V squared. Um, doing these outer two pieces, that's going to be 10VF. And this is also going to be 10VF. Well, there's your 20VF if you combine like terms. And then there's our 4F squared. So um, again, and in, in, in you run into these problems so much, you'll get used to maybe just uh, putting one variable in the first term, the V and the V in each of those first terms, and you'll put that F there in the last term of each of those binomials. But let's go one step further since this is a perfect square. Our final answer will be 2 times 5V plus 2F squared. Now that might take some practice just to almost kind of like guess and check, so to speak, when I just stuck, uh, stuck those F's back in there. But you'll do it so much where it'll become a habit. Um, just like when I first probably showed you bottoms up, it was like, whoa, that, that's crazy. But it becomes habit. And that's what will happen here as well. So there's our answer to that one. The second one here. Again, always look for GCF first. 24, 30, and 9. We can at least pull a 3 out. Let's see, all these terms have v's in them too, don't they? Um, we've got a v to the fourth, v cubed, v squared, so we can at least pull out a v squared. Let me separate this stuff. So that leaves us with 8v squared um, plus 
VB and minus 3 we pulled out the V squared so we just have a B squared now like I said in the first example you'll get used to doing these and notice the V's and the B's here kind of look like the V's and the F's over here um, we have the V squared, V squared, F squared, here's our B squared and then we have the VB like we have the VF so you'll get used to seeing them set up like that so let's do bottoms up our product is negative 24 our sum is 10 so those two numbers that work there are negative 6 and negative 4 because negative, no it's not negative 6 and negative 4 it's going to be negative 12 and 2 and how about a positive 12 and a negative 2 that's what we want to use because a positive 12 times a negative 2 it does give us a negative 24 and uh, a positive 12 minus 2 does give us that 10 so yeah you gotta play around with your numbers sometimes to get that to work out now w whether you want to bring the V down or, or whatever here kinda like I was just showing you uh, the bottoms up piece back here I'm gonna come back and end and just stick those B's in kinda like how I went back and just stuck those F's in a while ago so we have using bottoms up um, v plus 12, V minus 2. Remember to bring the 8 back. When we simplify, we have V plus, uh, dividing these by 4, we get 3 halves. And dividing these by 2, we get 1 fourth. Bring your 2 up, bring your 4 up, and don't forget to bring your 3V squared down. So we have 3V squared. Pulling that 2 up, we have 2v plus 3, stick your b in, and then we have 4v minus 1, or we can just go ahead and say minus b. And if you were to multiply all this stuff back out, you would go right back to the very beginning. Um, notice these two binomials, let's multiply those real quick in our head. 2v times 4v is 8v squared. Um, this is plus 2VB, or BV, however you want to call that, 2VB. Uh, that's going to be, no, I said plus, but that's going to be minus 2VB plus 12VB. That's how we get that positive 10VB there. And then 3B times negative B is negative 3B squared. And then with this 3V squared, obviously, um, we could just distribute that back up here and make sure we get what we started with. And we will. Now these first two examples had GCFs in them. Not every problem is going to have a GCF. So in this case here, we can actually jump straight into bottoms up. Um, notice we have x squared, y squared, kind of like how we had the v squared, f squared. Um, and then the x, y in the middle, kind of like how we had the vf or the vb in the middle. Uh, bottoms up here, 4 times negative 25. Our product is going to be negative 100. Our sum is equal to negative 15. So the two numbers that work here will be negative 20 and a positive 5. Because if you multiply those two numbers, you get negative 100. If you add those two numbers, you get negative 15. So we can come back and write this as x minus 20 and x plus 5 computers getting a little slow uh, don't forget to divide by 4 so we have x minus 5 when we simplify and we can't simplify this so we just bring the 4 up we have 4x plus 5 and now we don't want to leave the answer like this because we need to get that y squared at the end so just come back and stick in those y's and uh, that's it for that one. If you were to FOIL that back out, x times 4x is 4x squared. x times 5y is plus 5xy, and this is minus 20xy. So plus 5xy minus 20xy gives us that negative 15xy. And then negative 5y times positive 5y is negative 25y squared. So it does work out. So yeah, these take a little bit more work. Um, it's still using bottoms up, which we've talked about quite a bit. 
It's just a matter of remembering your GCF sometimes and then maybe coming back and just sticking those variables in at the end of the problem. Well, that's it for this video. Hope it helped.